How you doing? Thank you for tuning in to this here video presentation by Mr. Larry Whittington, or as he want to be known, Mr. Witt. Mr. Whittington knows all about mathematics, and that is why he founded the Fort Bend Tutorings. Today we're going to learn about word problems. Not the kind where you curse people out, but the mathematical kinds. The kind I don't be understanding at all. Alright, get your ink pen and your pencil ready. Take notes, because you're finna learn from Mr. Witt. This is Larry Whittington with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about mixture word problems that deal with money. Let's take a look at our first problem here today. Here it says a collection of dimes and nickels is worth a dollar and seventy cents. There are 21 coins in all. How many of each are there? Well first of all ladies and gentlemen when I'm setting up my mixture problems here I like to have this first column labeled as the amount. All right. Then, the second column is going to be my price, the dollar amount, and then finally, I'll just label this one as the mix, all right? So that third column, I'll just label as the final mix there. Then, I know that I'll be combining two sets of coins. One will be dimes, the other will be nickels, then I'll label my last row as the total. Okay. So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we do know that there are going to be 21 coins in all. So, my total amount of coins is going to be 21. I don't know the amount of dimes that I'll have, so I'll just label that as X. And I don't know the number of nickels. However, I want to write one equation using only one variable. And there is a way that we can avoid using another variable. And that is, we can simply take the difference of 21 and X and use that as the value of our nickels. So I'll label this as 21 minus X. The difference between the total number of coins that I have minus the number of dimes will definitely equal to the amount of nickels that I have. When it comes to the value of the dime, I know that's going to be one-tenth of a dollar. I also know that the value of each nickel is going to be five-hundredths of a dollar, and this amount here for the price I won't need for this equation. From there, in order to find out this last column, we'll be multiplying the first column times the second column. So x times one-tenth will give me one-tenth x, just like that. Then, multiplying 21 minus x times 5 hundredths is going to give me a value of 5 hundredths times 21 minus x. Then finally, I'm told that the total amount of my mix is going to be $1.70. So the total amount of my coins will add to $1.70 and that amount was given to me in the word problem. Finally, it will be this last column that will define the equation that we'll need to solve this word problem here. It will be 1 tenth x plus five hundredths times 21 minus x will equal to a dollar and seventy cents and I'll just write it as one and seven tenths. In solving our equation here I'm gonna get rid of the decimals and I'll do that by multiplying each and every term by the smallest place value which is the hundredths place two places from the decimal. Rewriting our equation I'll have 100 times one tenth x plus 100 times five hundredths times 21 minus x which equals to 100 times 1 and 7 tenths, just like that. Now multiplying by 100 will move my decimal two places to the right. So I'll end up with 10x plus 5 times the quantity of 21 minus x, which equals to 100 times 1 and 7 tenths, which is 170. All right, so notice that I have an equivalent equation now that does not contain any decimals. All right, from here I'm going to distribute, which is my favorite property, by the way. So I got my arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll be bringing down 10x plus 5 times 21 is going to give me 105 minus 5x, which now equals to 170. Combining my like terms, I know that 10x minus 5x is going to give me 5x plus this 105, which equals to 170. From there, I'll be subtracting 105 to both sides of my equal sign using the additive principle of addition. And from there, I'll be bringing down 5x, which equals to 65. Once I have this, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be dividing both sides by the coefficient, that 5. And once I have that set up, ladies and gentlemen, I'll know that x equals to 65 divided by 5, which is 13. Yeah. 
13, ladies and gentlemen, which is going to tell me the number of dimes, remember? Our value of x is the number of dimes. So I have 13 dimes, and since I had 21 coins altogether, remember it was 21 minus x that told us the number of nickels. So 21 minus 13 gives me a value of 8. So I know that I have 8 nickels, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to complete problem number 1, and these are our answers here. 13 dimes and 8 nickels, done and done. Done, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, just like that. Okay, let's look at our next problem. Here it is. In problem number two, it says Joey wants to mix 50 pounds of nuts worth $2 per pound with some nuts worth $6 per pound to make a mixture worth $5 per pound. How many pounds of the $6 nuts must he use? So once again, I'll be setting up my table first. I have my amount here, and I'm just going to shorthand it to AMT. I have my price, and then I'll have my final mix set up right here. For my rows, I'll label these as my $2 nuts. I have $6 nuts, and then I'm trying to create $5 nuts. All right. So these, of course, are the prices per pound, so keep that in mind. Now, for the $2 per pound nuts, I know that I'll be using 50 pounds of that, okay? So that's the amount of $2 per pound nuts that I have, 50 pounds of that. I don't know how many pounds of the $6 per pound nuts, so I'll just use that as my variable x. And finally, for the $5 per pound nuts, what I'm trying to get to, that's going to be the sum of these two amounts. So I'll just count this as x plus 50, just like that. From there, we'll be plugging in our prices. I know that these nuts are $2 per pound. The second row talks about the $6 per pound nuts. And finally, the amount of my final result, my final mixture, is going to be $5 per pound. Recall that anytime you're trying to get that third column, you only have to multiply the first column times the second column in order to get it. So in other words, we know that 50 times 2 is 100. So that value goes right there, okay? Then multiplying x times 6, this will give me 6x. Finally, x plus 50 will multiply times 5, and I'll write it as 5 times the quantity of x plus 50, just like that. Remember that it's your last column here that'll define your equation. So I'll write the equation as 100 plus 6x equals to 5 times the quantity of x plus 50. And this is the equation that we'll use to solve this word problem here. All right, solving the equation, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 5 inside the parentheses here using the distributive property. So I have my arrows popping. I'll be bringing down 100 plus 6x, which equals to 5 times x, which is 5x, plus 5 times 50, which is 250. From there, I want to isolate the variable x, so I'll be subtracting 5x to both sides of the equal sign. That's right, one step at a time, solving for the variable. I'll be bringing down 100 plus x equals to 250. And then, subtracting 100 to both sides of the equal sign, I'll end up with x equals to 150 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. So this is going to be 150 pounds of that $6 per pound nuts. That's what I need, 150 pounds of it, ladies and gentlemen. And this is going to be the answer to problem number two. That's right, we had a nut problem. All right, so go nutty on it. So now, next problem is coming up for you. In problem number three, it says a box contains 11 nickels. How many quarters must be added so that the box will contain $2.30? So once again, we're mixing coins together now. And we're going to go ahead and set up our table with the amount, the price, and the final mix. And for our rows, we know that we'll be combining nickels as well as quarters. All right. Okay, and this will be our total amount of coins in all. So I'll just write total for that row. All right, let's plug in our values. So they told us in the original problem that we have 11 nickels. So the amount of nickels, that's 11. The number of quarters, we don't know. They're asking us how many, so therefore we'll be using a variable. Then finally, for our total amount, we'll go ahead and just simply add 11 plus x to give us a result, a sum of x plus 11. From there, I'll write down the price of each one of my coins here. I know that nickels in dollars are going to be five hundredths. I know that quarters in dollars are going to be 25 hundredths. And I don't need the value of that last 
box right there in that second column. Finally, in order to get the third column, you need to multiply the first column times the second column. So we'll write this as 5 hundredths times 11, and then multiplying x times 25 hundredths is going to be 25 hundredths x. And we already know what the total value of our coins will be, and that's going to be $2.30. So I'll just write it as 2 and 3 tenths here, okay? So my last column, as promised, is going to be our equation. So I'll set it up as 5 hundredths times 11 plus 25 hundredths x will now equal to 2 and 3 tenths. So this is the equation that we'll need for this problem number 3. Solving our equation, I'm going to start by getting rid of the decimals. So my smallest place value in this equation is the hundredths place. Alright, so rewriting this, I have 100 times 5 hundredths times 11, and this is going to be plus 100 times 25 hundredths x which equals to 100 times 2 and 3 tenths. So if you haven't noticed by now, I really don't care for decimals in my equation, so I usually will clear them when dealing with decimals in my equation. So let's continue. Here, multiplying by 100, I'll move the decimal two places to the right, so I end up with 5 times 11. Plus, multiplying 100 times 25 hundredths x will leave me with 25x. This now equals to 100 times 2 and 3 tenths, which is 230. From there, I'm going to multiply 5 times 11 to get 55. This is going to be plus 25x, which equals to 230. Subtracting 55 to both sides of my equal sign, that will isolate the term with the variable x in it. So I'm bringing down 25x, which equals to, let's go ahead and borrow here. So that's going to be a 5, borrowing here, that's a 12 minus 5 is a 7, so 175, exactly, something you already knew. So then we're going to go ahead and divide everything by 25, yep, we sure are. I'm bringing down my x here, and I know that 175 divided by 25 is 7, that's right, 7. So I end up needing 7 quarters, all right to add with those 11 nickels I started out with to equal to $2.30 and change. And this is the answer to problem number three, ladies and gentlemen, seven quarters, just like that. All right, let's move on. I got one more problem to show you, okay? Let's check this out, another nut problem. So I guess this could have been called the nut and coin video? All right, so we'll think about renaming that. So we have cashews sell for $1.20 per quarter pound, and Brazil nuts sell for $1.50 per quarter pound. How many pounds of cashews should be mixed with 20 pounds of Brazil nuts to get a mix that sells for $1.30 per quarter pound? Now, what's important here, ladies and gentlemen, is notice that you have a different units of measurement here. They're asking us for how many pounds of cashews we should mix with 20 20 pounds of Brazil nuts, but the prices are in quarter pounds. So since it's a quarter pound price and we're comparing it to full pounds, we want to get things in the same unit of measurement. So in solving this problem, you only want to deal in quarter pounds or you only want to deal in pounds. And I'm going to choose to only deal in pounds, ladies and gentlemen, so that's what we're going to be using pounds, not quarter pounds. So check out how I approach this problem. First of all, I know I'm going to have my amount. I'm going to have my price, and I'm going to have my final mix for that last column. For my rows, I know I'm going to have some cashews here, all right? And I'm also going to have some Brazil nuts, so we'll just call them Brazil, all right? And then I'll have my total mixture as my last row. As far as the cashews are concerned, they're asking us how many pounds of cashews should be mixed, so we don't know the amount of the cashews. That's our unknown. That's our variable x. As far as the Brazil nuts are concerned, we're told that we'll be adding 20 pounds of those. All right, so I have x plus 20 for my total amount here. Okay. In order to find out what we would pay for a full pound of cashews, we need to multiply the given amount, this $1.20 per quarter pound, we need to multiply that times 4 because that will tell us what a full pound of cashews will cost. So therefore, I'm taking this $1.20, multiplying it times 4 to find out that the cost of a full pound of cashews is going to be $4.80. The Brazil nuts, they normally sell for $1.50. So multiplying $1.50 times 4, I'll end up with $6 per pound for the Brazil nuts. 
Finally, I want to end up with a mix that sells for a dollar thirty per quarter pound. So multiplying a dollar thirty times four, you'll end up with five dollars and twenty cents. So this is going to be the setup for the first and the second column. Remember that our third column, you simply multiply the first two columns together in order to get that. So x times 4 and 8 tenths is going to give me 4 and 8 tenths x. Then 20 times 6, that's just going to give me 120. Finally, for this last row, the quantity of x plus 20 times 5 and 2 tenths is going to give me 5 and 2 tenths times x plus 20. I'll write it just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Let me go ahead and show you here that we have it. This last column. Yeah, that's going to create our equation. So setting this up, you'll have the following. You'll have 4 and 8 tenths plus 120 is going to equal to 5 and 2 tenths times x plus 20. And here's our equation for problem number 4. In order to solve our equation, I'm going to first of all get rid of my decimals by multiplying by the smallest place value. So this time my smallest place value is going to be 10. So I'm going to multiply each and every term by 10. That's right. Killing the decimals. That's right. The assassin, Mr. Wit. The weapon of choice, his stylus. So now, I'll be moving the decimal one place to the right by multiplying by 10. So I end up with 48x plus 1,200, mm -hmm, which equals to 52 times x plus 20. All right. Once I have this set up, notice I don't have any decimals anymore. Mm -hmm, and I'll be distributing, getting my arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm bringing down 48x plus 1,200, which equals to 52x plus 1,040. All right, now that I have that, let's go ahead and solve for our variable x. I'll start by subtracting 48x to both sides. That's right, getting all of my variables on one side of the equal sign, I bring down 1,200, which equals to 4x plus 1,040. Then I'll be subtracting 1,040 to both sides of my equal sign. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And I bring down the result of 1,200 minus 1,040, which is 160. This now equals to 4x. I'll be dividing both sides by 4. Mm -hmm. And once I have this, my 4's cancel out, so I'll bring down my variable x, and 160 divided by 4 is 40, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I need 40 pounds of cashews to get this mixture exactly the way I need it to be. In other words, for it to equal to $1.30 per quarter pound. All right, so we found out how many pounds of cashews we needed, and that completes problem number four, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. This was mixture word problems when we were dealing with money, all right? So don't forget to check out our mixture problem that deals with percents if you were looking for those, all right? I'll put a link right down here for you. All right, so once again, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you're able, please donate to keep these free videos coming coming your way. Peace. We're going to be learning about such things as linear, quadratics, system of equations, tables, mixtures, work, oh lord, distance, interest, of which I don't have much, investment. This is my favorite one. I'm going to name my grandbaby consecutive integers. <laughs> Algebraic translations and percents. I understand a little bit about my sense. I know that 50% off is pretty good. <laughs>